Hello, Poland. Hi from Germany. Yay. Nice to say hello to Germany. Poland. Hola, ¿cómo estás, Claudia? Yo estoy muy bien. ¿Y tú? Video and sound sounds great. Thank you for letting me know. Turkey, UK, Czech Republic, Canada, California, Berlin. Hi, Berlin. Ok, les doy la bienvenida. Muchas gracias, Expolingua, por invitar a Spring Spanish. I'm Mariana from Spring Spanish, and today we're going to learn conjugations. Vamos a aprender las conjugaciones del español de una manera distinta. We're going to learn a new way of learning conjugations without this. Let's see if you can, yes. Can you see this crazy table? So this is how most people teach Spanish verbs, right? Has, ¿Han visto tablas como estas? Cuéntenme en el chat. Have you seen tables like this one before? Claro. And what do you think about them? Do you like them? ¿Les gustan o no les gustan? Siempre. Oof, yeah. I know, por supuesto. <laughs> okay, and do you like them? Hello, Berlin. Yes, I'd be happier. I'm very happy to be here and I'll be happy if I were in Berlin because I really like that city. So hello, Berlin and hello, world, for being here. We're using this table in our language school. Okay, I have a device that is like a wheel to turn. That'd be interesting. Okay. Well, do you like this kind of tables, guys? Do you see yourselves using it in a conversation? No, say Sophie. Yeah, okay. No, you hate them. They're overwhelming, right? Total beginner. Okay, okay. Yes, overwhelming, right? So do you really see yourselves using them in a conversation? You know, you're talking to someone else. You have the pressure of the other person talking to you. Do you really, can you think of a, of a table like this and be able to conjugate verbs on, as you go? Tampoco. Absolutely useless. Okay, so in any case, you might, you might see yourself like this guy, right? Trying to think of your conjugation table while trying to have a conversation. Impossible. Yes. Um, there's so many people around the world. Okay. So at Spring Spanish, we have developed a new method that consists in learning chunks. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But before we do, I'd like to invite you guys, quisiera invitarles a que visiten nuestro canal de YouTube, youtube.com slash Spring Spanish. Yo soy Mariana, una de las cinco profes del canal, todos los días de lunes a viernes, from Monday to Friday. We publish a daily lesson about Spanish, obviously. So, if you stay until the end of this presentation, you're gonna get access. That's our Christmas gift for you guys, nuestro regalo de Navidad para ustedes. And that gift is a free course to learn Spanish from scratch in 30 days. It includes 30 videos, one for each day, plus a 66 page workbook all for free stay until the end so you get the code to access this together with this presentation and um you'll say what else in a minute okay so before we start antes de empezar i'm gonna share with you these lifesavers for this presentation okay so if you think i'm going too fast here boy muy rápido, you can say, vas muy rápido. You can write it in the chat, okay? And that means you're going too fast and then I'll know that I have to slow down. You can also say, puedes ir más despacio, por favor? Could you slow down, please? Um, sorry, looking at your messages, guys. Okay, um, if you don't understand, si no entienden algo, you can say, no entiendo. And if you want me to repeat something, you can say, puedes repetirlo. Feel free to take a picture. 
are you a native Spanish speaker? Yes, Sophie, I am. I am from Mexico. Soy de México. Woo! <laughs> so, saludos desde México. Entiendo. Muy bien. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so take a picture of these live servers, guys, and we are going to get started. Vamos a empezar. Muy bien. Comprendo. Uh, fácil de entender. Okay, muy bien, Marco. Good to know. Okay. So, before we um, go into our chunks, um, I want you guys to learn this. Quisiera que aprendan esto, es información general sobre los verbos en español. Por un lado, on, on one side, we have, there are regular and irregular verbs. Tenemos <laughs> Mexicanita en mi corazoncito. Muy bien, María. It's a, it's a good way of being Mexican. <laughs> okay, so, tenemos verbos regulares e irregulares en español. Regular and irregular verbs and in most languages as well. What are regular verbs that they follow a pattern? Irregular verbs don't. Um, also, most all verbs in Spanish. Todos los verbos en español terminan con AR, ER o IR. Si los quitamos, if we take those endings away, we are left with the stem, la raíz del verbo. I'm going to write that for you guys here. La raíz del verbo. Okay? So, that's something to keep in mind and it might be helpful for some of you guys. Okay? So, now. We're going to go over ejemplos navideños para aprender conjugación el día de hoy. We're going over Christmassy examples to learn conjugation. So, un chunk um, is cantar villancicos, to sing Christmas carols. Tenemos un verbo, we have a verb, that ends in A-R, cantar, cantar villancicos. You can learn that by heart, okay? Comer tamales. Eso es algo que hacemos en México en Navidad. We eat tamales. Mexicans eat tamales in Christmas. And that's a verb that ends with ER. And abrir los regalos, to open the presents. So we have three verbs here. They're going to help us to learn conjugations today. And if you can see here, so we have cantar, Comer, abrir, if we take those endings out, si quitamos esas eh, terminaciones, nos quedamos con la raíz de los verbos. Cant, com, abr. ¿Ok? ¿Estamos entendiendo qué son tamales? Ahora vamos a hablarlo, Marco. We're going to talk about tamales in a second. Wait to see. Ahora, ¿cómo se conjugan estos verbos en el presente? Now, remember, these are regular verbs. But the method we're going to go over today, you can apply to irregular verbs as well, okay? So, what I've been mentioning chunks a lot, if you have noticed, right? So, what are chunks? So, chunks are word combinations that you can learn by heart because they will never change. They will always be the same. For example, Si están leyendo, if you're reading a book about Christmas in Mexico, un libro sobre la Navidad en México, quizás van a encontrarse con una oración como esta. You'll find a sentence like this one. Los mexicanos comen tamales en la cena de Navidad. What's a chunk in there? Comen tamales. Okay? So you can learn that. You can learn that fact. You can, you're going to remember, oh, so Christmas, Mariana's presentation during Expo Lingua, and Mexicans. So what do Mexicans do? Los mexicanos comen tamales. You can learn that. Um, and instead of thinking, okay, so mexicanos es ellos. Tercera persona del plural. ¿Cierto? Um, comer, to eat. Como es ellos, entonces es comen. So we're thinking about our conjugation table here. Not useful. 
if you think about Mexicans and Christmas and tamales, and you remember, oh, los mexicanos comen tamales, it's easier to remember, right? And quizás pueden usarlo en una conversación. You can use it in a conversation, right? Because um, you might want to say, well, in Alemania, no comen tamales. Los alemanes no comen tamales. And then you can start playing around with that chunk. Some other chunks we looked at before are the um, lifesavers I shared before. So, muy rápido, that's a chunk. It's always going to be the same. Ir más espacio, that's a chunk. Always going to be the same. Por favor, another chunk. Repetirlo, another chunk. So, um, you're going to learn three chunks in this presentation and you're going to see it's going to be a lot more easier. Tienes razón, los alemanes no comen tamales. No. You, you should though, you should. <laughs> so what are tamales? These are tamales. Tamales is a typical, es un platillo mexicano típico. Y hay muchos en México. Cada estado tiene una forma diferente y están rellenos de algo diferente. They're filled with something different wherever you are in Mexico and they're very, very good. So yummy, yes, very yummy. <laughs> okay, so. How do we use this in conversations without losing our minds? ¿A ti te gustan los tamales? Mmm, me encantan. Los de Durango. That's my city of origin. Durango in the north of Mexico. Okay. So, we're going, tengo hambre. Now, purple anya, hambre needs an H at the beginning. Huh? Good. You're hungry. Well, it's almost dinner time, I think, in Germany, right? Okay. <laughs> Lo siento. No worries. Uh, we're here to learn. We're here to learn. Um, okay. So, how do we use these chunks in conversations without going crazy? I mean, conjugations. How do we use them in, without going crazy? So, you learn them in context, in a sentence, and that's how we're going to learn today. Los aprendemos en contexto, en oraciones, nunca de manera aislada. Never as an isolated word okay you use chunks like i mentioned and you can also use flashcards how como mariana es porque tengo hambre <laughs> yeah you have to eat before learning yes it helps it helps okay so this is an example of a flashcard which are how we use them at spring spanish and if you remember our sentence from before los mexicanos comen tamales then, that's your sentence, you've identified your chunk, comen tamales, you take your chunk away, you leave a blank space on the front of your flashcard, and then the translation um, plus the rest of the sentence. So, los mexicanos, blank, eat tamales en la cena de Navidad. And then on the back, you write, los mexicanos comen tamales en la cena de Navidad. Okay? So, this is how we're going to learn conjugations today. Questions so far. Los mexicanos comen tamales. Very good. Hi everyone. Hi cocodrilo. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna keep talking about los mexicanos a bit because we're reading that Christmas story about Mexico. Remember? Okay. So um, we can apply this. Los mexicanos comen tamales. So you've learned comen tamales, and you can apply that to other verbs ending in er. For example, beber. Beber mucha cerveza. So we want to say, si queremos decir en español, Mexicans drink lots of beer on Christmas Eve. Um, how do we conjugate beber mucha cerveza if we're talking about Mexicans? Los mexicanos, remember, comen tamales. How do we say beben? Very good, people. Very good. Okay. Los mexicanos beben mucha cerveza. What about Germans or Czechs or uh, I don't know, you name it. You you tell me, guys, in your countries, Gluvan. Oh, Gluvan, I miss that so much. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's keep talking. So tejer, we have another ER verb, tejer el chal. And that's something we say in Mexico. Tejer el chal, which means to knit a shawl, um, we use it to say that we chat a lot, we talk a lot. So, 
Estamos tejiendo el chal. We're talking a lot. Uh -huh. And um, so we have tejer. Remember, comen tamales, beben mucha cerveza. How would it work with tejer el chal? Los padres, parents chat while children play. Tejen. Uh -huh. Tejen. Very good. Okay. Um, now let's go to talk about something else that, that's related to Christmas. Fireworks. So families watch the fireworks. Las familias ver los fuegos artificiales. Ven. Very good. Does it make sense, uh, sense, guys? Are we understanding this? How it works? Is it better than um, than conjugation tables? Do you think it's it's going to work better for you guys? Okay. So dejen and ven. Very good. Beren. Ah, no, this, this, this one is ven, just like that. Beren. Yeah, okay. Sí, es mejor para mí. Very good, Lian. Gracias. No hay de qué, Dennis. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, so let's go to verbs ending in IR. Y like abrir, abrir los regalos. So, los niños abren. Los regalos que les trajo el niño Dios. This is something you should know about Mexico. In the north, in el norte, people talk about Santa Claus, just like in the U.S. Eh, Santa Claus me trajo regalos. That's what children in the north of Mexico would say. In the south, people talk about el niño Dios, baby Jesus, or the three kings. Okay, so that's a cultural difference between um, within Mexico. So, los niños abren los regalos. Okay, so you can remember that. Los niños abren los regalos. So, we want to say partir, to slice the cake. And we're talking about grandmas here. Grandmothers slice the cake on Christmas Eve. How would that be in Spanish? Abren los regalos? But yes. Very good, Daniela. Yeah. Very good. This is working for you guys. Very good. Parte en reparto. Okay, Janine is going way ahead. <laughs> well, that one's easy. That, there was a hint there. But yes. So aunts and uncles distribute the presents for their nieces and nephews. We're talking about repartir los regalos. And it's los tíos. Very good. Reparten. Yes. Okay. So now let's move on to verbs ending in AR. Remember, cantar villancicos. So, families sing car Christmas carols. Las familias cantan. Can you use dar to give? Um, yes, dan. But that's an irregular verb, if I remember correctly. Let me think about it. But yeah, okay. So let's 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 stick to the presentation just now, and then we'll we'll keep on going, right? Okay, so family sing Christmas carols. Las familias cantan villancicos navideños. Okay, so cantan villancicos navideños. So if you want to talk about Mexicans cooking tamales for dinner on Christmas Eve, how do we say preparar tamales? Preparan, very good. Be preparan, bailan. <laughs> okay, yes, very good. So. I'm talking about people from my city of origin, the mi ciudad de origen. People from Durango dance on New Year's Eve. How will you say that? Bailar en año nuevo. Bailan. Very good. Yes. Okay. So now let's move on to the singular version, el singular de ellas y ellos. Ella y él. Right? So, tenemos beber. To drink. Mariana no bebe cerveza en la cena de Navidad. <laughs> la abuela de Mariana teje. Yes. Uh -huh. Very good. Teje. Very good. What about ver? Teje. Teje. Yes. Yes. Ve. Uh -huh. Very good. Yes. Okay. We can move on. Very good. Now, let's go to abrir. So, la primita de Mariana abre los regalos. And that's, en español, cuando algo es chiquito, 
small, we say ito or ida, la primita. So my baby cousin. And there are zero, right? Yes, el cocodrilo. Uh huh. So if you can see, verbs ending in ir and er share the same ending. Uh -huh. So that's easy, right? It's easier. Um, so, okay. So, abre los regalos, parte el pastel, and mi tío reparte los regalos. Very good. Very good. Yes. Very good. Okay. Now let's go to cantar. Verbs ending in AR. So, my family, Mariana's family, sings Christmas carols. Canta villancicos navideños. How will you say preparar la cena de Navidad? Prepara. Very good. How will you say that my brother plays the violin on toca? Very good. Yes. Okay, so what about you guys? Let's see how we're doing in terms of time. Okay, we have eight minutes left. Um, okay, so as regards tú, now remember, there are two ways of saying you. En español. Podemos decirlo de dos maneras. Tú o usted. Y en algunos países, vos. Pero en México, solo en el sur, usan vos. So we're going to focus on tú. Nos vamos a concentrar en tú. And you guys are already, yes, very good. <laughs> Prepara la cena de Navidad. Tejes. Oops. I went up one step ahead. <laughs> Mucho glue wine. Very good, Stefan. Tejes. Ves. Nice. What about partes? Yes. Very good, guy. Okay, what about usted? This is tricky. Uh huh. So, what do you notice here? Okay. What's the pattern? What's the difference between usted and tú? Can you tell me in the chat? Um, the S is missing. Yes. Very good. So that's a difference, right? Now you can learn it either by saying, okay, so I take the S out or you can just learn the chunk. Usted toma mucha cerveza. Usted prepara la cena de Navidad. Usted teje el And then just apply that same pattern to other verbs. R or A, R. Okay. Yes. Very good, guys. You got it very quickly. Or you already knew, knew it. I hope not. Okay, so ustedes, the plural you. How does that work? Ustedes cantan villancicos. Ustedes comen tamales. Ustedes abren los regalos. Toman. Very good. Preparar. Preparan. Okay. Tejen. Yes. Ven. Very good. And... Partir. Parten. Yes. Very good, guys. Now, ¿y yo? What happens with me? What's up with me? That's another chunk you can use when, you know, like your friends, sus amigos están hablando y no nos incluyen. They're not including you. Then you can say, ¿y yo? Okay. So, based on what we, would, we have learned. Wow. People already know this. Okay. So, um, why doesn't canta work? Tell me, why doesn't canta work? Why can I say yo canta? To say I, I sing Christmas carols. Why doesn't it work? Third person. Okay, yes, that's right. Tercera persona. Okay. Tercera persona. El, ella. Very good. Yes. So, yo canto villancicos. Now, why can't I say yo come tamales? Yo siempre cono. Yes. Very good. Yo como, yo abro. Yes, so that's pretty easy, right? Yo siempre con O, oh, like Susan said. Very good. Yo abro. Yes. Okay, so us, tú y yo. Nosotras, if it's all women. Nosotros, if it's all men or men and women. A mí me encantan los tamales de piña. Hmm, interesante. I don't. <laughs> Okay, so how does nosotros work? Nosotras, 
cantamos villancicos. No podemos decir, we can't say nosotras cantar villancicos, right? Because that would be like Tarzan. Tarzan, yo cantar, tu cantar. No, that doesn't work. Nosotras cantamos villancicos. So you can just imprint that on, on your brain and say, nosotras cantamos villancicos, and then apply that to another verb ending in AR, right? Yes, saludos, Nat Natalie. Oh, <laughs> okay, so we think Christmas carols. Nosotros comemos tamales. Nosotras abrimos los regalos. So we eat tamales, we open the presents. Okay, so if it's AR, it's amos. If it's ER, it's emos. If it's IR, it's emos. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, so how we're doing in terms of time. Hey, we, we have three minutes left. I'm going to go over this very quickly because we're running out of time, guys. Okay, we're almost done. But yes, thank you, Sofia. Tomamos, bebemos, dejemos. Very good. You guys got it really quickly. I'm glad. Okay, so how do we use this all in a conversation without going crazy? Like I said, como dije antes, you can prepare flashcards. Okay, so you put on the, the, the far end your complete sentence, and then um, on the front, you take your chunk away. How can I get the PowerPoint presentation? I'm going to talk about that just now. Give me one second. We're going to get there. Okay, so uh, back of your flashcard, you put the answer, okay? So we want to say, los mexicanos comer tamales en Navidad. Okay, so this is how we teach at Spring Spanish, okay? So this is a method that we developed at Spring Spanish. You get a lot of input, like the one I provided you with in this presentation, or the one you can get in a book, or a podcast, or a movie, una película, un podcast, un libro. You detect sentences, detectan oraciones. Um, not yet, Lynn. Uh, we're going to get there. For now, this Spring Spanish is offering um, content for beginners mainly, but we are developing content for um, intermediate and advanced as well. Yes. Okay, so you, um, you, you, you choose a sentence, you identify your chunk, you learn that chunk. So, los mexicanos comen tamales, Mariana no bebe cerveza, el papá de Mariana prepara la cena, um, and then you start to use them. So and then um, you can um, uh, you can tell me about yourselves, okay? So if you go into our YouTube channel and then you can leave a comment for me and say, tell me your story about Christmas. So um, so we do have an intermediate and advanced course, but it's not on YouTube, okay? Um, so drop us a line in the email I'm going to provide you with in just a second if you want further information. Now, if you follow this, chunking method that we develop at Spring Spanish, you'll be able to impress your native speaking friends in no time. Okay, so we've reached the end of our presentation. Si quieren saber más sobre los verbos en español, if you want to know more about the verbs in Spanish, you can watch these videos where I talk about the verb ser, the verb estar, both of which mean to be, and I have one in particular that talks about um, the difference. And you can also watch Paulissima's video about the difference between tú and usted and mucho más material, many more videos. So follow this QR code or the link below to get access to these videos, to the presentation, and to the free course from scratch in 30 days. Okay, so follow the link, use the QR code, and get your 30 videos for free together with, with a workbook. If you have further questions, si tienen más preguntas, aquí está nuestro correo electrónico. Here's our email, contact at springlanguages.com, or go directly to our YouTube channel. Okay? Muchas gracias. Besos. Alemania, Polonia, República Chile. Ah, buena profesora. Thank you. Gracias, Sofía. Muchas gracias, Anita. Gracias por venir. Me hubiera encantado verles en ver.